Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, the Retro Life for You, movies of the 1980s. We are still in our month of October scare fest going on here, and I think that we've got uh, probably one of the scariest ones yet. But before we get into it, uh, we like to get our niceties out of the way early on. So, uh, pleasantries. Travis, our pleasantries. Ple- Travis, how was your week, man? <laughs> Uh, it was a good week. I was busy at work and busy yesterday. I ran a chainsaw from about nine o'clock in the morning until about five o'clock in the afternoon. So, could you feel your hands at the end of the eat. night? Huh? Could you feel your hands at the end of the night? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my hands was all right. It's my elbows. My elbows hurt. My elbows. I remember, uh, being younger and working a weed eater for so long, and it would. Oh feel yeah, like... now weed eater will make your hands feel like they're vibrating for the next day. Exactly. Yes, that's the feeling. And it's like if you mm-hmm. popped your knuckles, it's like this weird feeling between your bones. Yeah, chainsaw a little different. Yeah. How was your weekend? Uh, uh a little sickly there. Um, yeah. I actually lost my voice a few days ago, and I was thinking I wasn't going to make the podcast this week. I'm like, man, this is going to be the first in a while that I've. Well, maybe the only one in a while that I've missed. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I I just know that uh, I couldn't talk, and uh, I probably still sound a little bit sick in my voice and everything. Sinuses haven't gone away completely, but they allowed me to speak at least, so I'm thankful for that. Heck yeah! Oh, uh, congratulations! By the way, for those of y'all that don't know, don't know, Chris is uh, once again making a. Uh, uh, taking a turn on his directional highway toward his career path. I have left Walmart in the dust. <laughs> I said, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Uh, Walmart actually was not a terrible job. It's just not where you want to be long term. If you need a temporary right. job to get you through till you can land something you want or need, it's fine, but yeah, yeah I, I, I got back working with the uh, state of Tennessee. Um, basically, mm-hmm. my reti- my years that I put in were still there, and I can finish topping them off for retirement. So that's my goal is to get my just get my time in for retirement, man, looking ahead of time. Retire with that state pension, baby. That's the one thing you can all, that you can say for sure that uh, when people talk about state jobs not paying as well as some private sector jobs, that is pretty much true to an, to a large extent, but – a lot of private sector jobs also don't offer you a pension. They give you a 401k. They give you some bonuses. Um, yep. You know, and you might have the week. You may or may not have weekends off, depending on what you do. But uh, with the state job, at least, you know, I got weekends and holidays off. I work seven to three or eight to four. I forget which it is. Uh, but I get a yearly bonus. They call longevity. And then I build up time pretty quick to take off work for vacation or sick time. I, um, in retirement. I mean, you got a, a pension that you work toward. You put 30 full years in, you retire making your full benefits, what you were making when you quit. But in 25 yeah, right. years, you lose a little bit. You only work 20 years. You probably get about 50%. I don't know what it is. I'm going to ask them. Anyway, yeah, starting that, glad to move forward with it. And uh, hope that that lasts me through retirement. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Well, what is the... What is this movie we're doing this week? You said you said you feel like it's probably one of the scariest ones. Well, you know, we did. We just got done doing Elm Street, of course, and I told you I thought that was really scary when I was a kid. The the thought that you could go to sleep and dream and you possibly die in your dream because you can't get away. You know, scary thing. We did the fog. Marty and I did the fog, and that's a eerie, scary thing. When I was younger, I didn't want to run out anywhere where fog was, thinking I'd see an outline image of a person in it for the longest time right um, firestarter was just a fun kind of scary movie more of a thriller i guess yeah that we did and uh what was our other one we did um night of the comet i believe wasn't it night of the comet yes with miss Catherine mary stewart night of the comet's a fun more of a fun horror movie with some That's zombies the one I, missed. I was real upset about that i know i know it's our I'm, favorite I'm, friend I of the show hated that you missed it too i really did uh, this week is Poltergeist. Um, probably one of the movies when I was younger that had most the, the scariest outcome for me, at least. Uh, there are some scenes I I would remember vividly to this day. And it's a classic, man. 
it's I'm right up there with, I mean, when you go to, I know uh, everything about it, the soundtrack, all that stuff. Cause I know when you talk about the big, the big classic horrors, you know what I mean? You've got exorcist, you've got the shining, you've got poltergeist, you know, it's like poltergeist is right in there with them, with the mm-hmm. with hitters. No doubt. I mean, the movie itself, it came out in 1982. Uh, I never heard of the director Toby Hooper. I don't know what else he's done, but Toby Hooper was the director. Now, Steve, it's he it's, it's more hard. Known. It's well, more let known. me because I was so happy when I was. Well, I, really? I rewatched. I tried to rewatch this a little bit earlier today. Uh, he did not do those, did he? Uh, no, I'll tell you what he did. Um, but it's so funny that my eleven-year-old has got really interested in this, and he's been watching Poltergeist with me. <laughs> <laughs> but Toby Hooper is responsible for the original. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, man. Okay. In, well, in, now, in, all right. So, in, in, I never really was a big fan of Chainsaw of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, there's some Chainsaw Charlie, some of my favorites. I just never was a big fan of them. I I don't know what it is about them, but it, it's They're never get, it never interested me like you did some other people. You don't like the guts and the gore. Well, I'm I'm not a big fan of of horror movies that are just you know blood and guts, gore and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. But I mean, at the same time, I oh, it just didn't stand out as something that was I wanted to watch. It yeah. should be scary, yes. A family of people that's doing stuff like that and cutting people up with chainsaws and everything. Yeah, it should definitely be scary. Well, it depends on which one you watch. There's a lot of different ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 there was, there was three of them, wasn't there? And then they were re then they were redone after that shortly. Well, there were four really. And then they started doing the reimaginings. Um, I believe two was the one that had uh, Dennis Hopper in it. And three was actually called Leatherface. And then four was the new generation with Renee Zellweger and uh, yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Right. Which might be my favorite because it's absolutely ridiculous, but it is hilarious. <laughs> And then the I new, mean, I, honestly, the newer, the newer uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacres, I think, are some of my favorites. But that's one I, of my favorite. Yeah, I love. I see. I'm a horror movie lover too. So, like, well, and if it's a horror movie, I'm gonna watch it. Has he, I, I, we can look him up real quick. We need to. Has he done anything else that you're aware of? Toby Hooper. Yeah. Yeah, he's not. It's mostly been in the vein of uh, horror movies. I think he did the Mangler about the big machine or whatever. Uh, he did uh i think he's done an episode of freddy the freddy's nightmares thing um he, uh, there's another one uh it was pretty big that he did i'm gonna look up his 80s work real quick just so we get an idea uh actually jump just a little bit ahead of say of, of uh, 80s because that's where texas chainsaw massacre was in the 70s it's 74 well yeah um, yeah but if you go past that there's salem's lot Salem's Lot. There you go. Uh, the I think that house. was the TV show, though. That was the TV show. I tried to okay, watch. I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. I tried to watch the original t- Salem's Lot here uh, last week, and golly, bomb! It was yeah. rough to watch. Well, you are right. He did two episodes of the TV miniseries. Okay. Uh, a movie called The Fun House. A movie called Venom. Then there's Poltergeist and Life Force, Invaders from Mars, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two in 86 amazing stories the tv series uh he went to tv for a little bit with equalizer and freddy's nightmares yeah and then uh came back in 89 with something called spontaneous combustion yeah it's, I, I don't know that one now he went beyond it into the 90s for some stuff um tales from the crypt tv series we all used to love to watch that i'm sure absolutely um, night terrors the mangler which you mentioned yeah so there was uh, TV shows like The Nowhere Man and Dark Skies. Yeah, The Mangler was crazy, man. <laughs> well, it I had see. Freddy in it. Freddie played Bill in it, though, by the way. Did he? Mm-hmm. Well, he uh, definitely stayed busy. We'll say that. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah, just you see. Yeah, which I, it tripped me out when I saw his name because when I, like I said, I tried to rewatch it earlier today. And when I was, I said, what? This is Toby Hooper? And Steven, meanwhile, Steven Spielberg did the screenplay. He's producing it. He's like right. he's doing all kind of stuff with this movie, and it shows. Like well, he was, 100%. he was producer and co-writer. He had yeah. two of the people, Mark Victor and Michael Gross, or 
G-R-A-I-S, how you pronounce his name? It totally shows, too, because I'm going to go against the grain here and make a lot of people sick. I, I do believe this was our most requested uh, movie when we did yes. our little poll, wasn't it? When we did our poll, Poltergeist was the most requested. of A lot of different people said in their four choices, if if we were to do their four choices all together, yeah. they picked Poltergeist as one of the weeks to record. Right, yeah, I think I think when you all tallied up, Poltergeist had the most numbers. It so, was, it's funny enough, Poltergeist and Gremlins, and we're like, Gremlins just was not, to us, a feel for Halloween as much as it was Christmas time. So. Right, yeah. So for me, this movie... As far as a horror movie is concerned, this movie is brilliantly written. It's brilliantly acted. It's brilliantly produced. The special effects for 1982 were phenomenal. Uh, I can remember seeing this as a, a clips of this as a kid, you know, be on mm -hmm. TV or whatever and getting scared to death. This is not probably even in my top 10 favorite scary movies. I just do not enjoy the movie. I appreciate it for being the phenomenon that it is being one of the all time horror greats and horror classics. I do appreciate it for that. And it is, I'm not faulting it as far as a well-made movie goes. I think it's phenomenal. I just personally don't like the flow of it or something. I don't know. I just get bored with it. But you know, what I was going to say, the reason why I say that though, I was, I was leading into it surprised me with Toby Hooper being the director because honest to God, this felt like watching Close Encounters of the Third Kind <laughs> with scary parts. Like it really, truly felt like a Steven Spielberg movie. It felt more like I was exploring something than it was something was attacking me. Yeah. Well, Spielberg definitely had, you know, some input to it. So, right. So, and you know, we did a top five or a top 10, if you remember, horror movies of the 80s. Uh -huh. And I don't think either one of us had this in our top 10 or top five, whatever I, we did. I believe you're right. I don't think, think of it. I don't, I, I had to go back and rewatch that episode. Uh, if you want to know about that, you know, those of you listening, just look back in the archives and uh, take a listen to it as well. See what you think and uh, let us know what your favorites are as well. For sure. I don't think this movie even garnered that much um, attention at the time until, um, is it Heather O'Rourke uh, passed? I think that's what. Well, kind of, it wasn't the first it, movie. It wasn't the first movie when it happened. Uh, I think she was there through all three of them. Yeah, yeah. And then something did happen to her. She had, uh, I, I can tell you in just a minute, actually, what she had. It's, uh, they, they said there was a curse to this movie, basically. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> just to tell you exactly about the little curse thing, both daughters are, are dead. Uh, mm -hmm. The older daughter, Dominic Dune, her ex-boyfriend, strangled her unconscious in the driveway of their West Hollywood home. Oh my she God. died on November 4th, never having regained consciousness at the age of 22. Heather O'Rourke died of intestinal stenosis on February 1st of 88 at the age of 12. And both, both are actually buried at Westwood Memorial Park in Los Angeles. So, yeah, bit right. of a this, and this movie was also partially based um on real life and on amityville wasn't it i don't know if it's actually amityville i just know that it's or partially it's, it's 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 partially inspired by a true story the way they um did many the hauntings movie, though, and stuff that's been around for many years and exactly it could be again. a number of things it was based off of but it may be partly to do with amityville because in amityville they were buried on top of an indian cemetery right mm -hmm. yeah this house was built on top of a cemetery in the movie yeah that they just removed the headstones and moved them. And yeah, moved Coach the was uh, old Coach, old Craig T. Nelson, old Co Coach, uh, who, for those of you that don't know, played Steve Freeland. He was the dad in the movie. Uh, uh -huh. He was a broker or what was it? He he worked for the firm that built the community. Right. He was selling the houses, basically getting people in there. Uh, they were the first family to move in. Yeah. Into the neighborhood. And that's one of the things that was brought up about this movie was they're the only family in the only house in that area. Surely the cemetery stretched further than just the one house. I'm but sure. the way they describe it was they were the first to be in that, you know, area there. Yeah. The first ones to move in and disturb the spirits and everything. Plus, I, I think something about the little girl, uh, her character, I think, was born in the house or something. Mm hmm well, that's like too. You I mean you can drive around I, 15, 20 cemeteries within 15 or 20 miles of me would be big enough to put a dog on housing development in. Like <laughs> there's some 
There's some large could, ones. Yeah, there, you can cover some ground with some of them. And I'll tell you, uh, especially in a lot of southern areas, they um, were really serious over the years of maintaining and keeping up the cemeteries and even expanding out on the size of them if more people wanted to be buried there. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. We have one up here at Graceland that's where uh, my my grandparents, or a fair bit of my family's uh, actually buried in there, and they've got a whole wing for it that's, uh, uh, it's, it's either, it's a Jewish, it's a Jewish uh, cemetery. So there's an entire gated, within the grounds, there's another area that's got hedges around it and a gate that it's a, it's like its own cemetery inside of the cemetery that's only for Jewish people. Right. Which is pretty wild. Well, you mentioned just a moment ago about Craig T. Nelson playing mm-hmm. uh, part of Steve Freeling. Uh, he's also joined by Joe Beth Williams, who plays the wife, Diane Freeling. Uh, Joe Heather, Beth. O- Heather O'Rourke, we mentioned, plays Carol Ann Freeling. And Dominique Doom played Dana Freeling. Now, the son, uh, Oliver Robbins was the young boy that played Robbie Freeling. Yeah, Robbie got on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> was he annoying? You know, it was funny though. The only thing I could think, I had, when I saw a scary movie, I didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. I haven't thought about it. And then when I saw this, because you know, scary movie with the Wayans brothers is yep. parody and they pay homage for a lot of things. When I saw the clown sitting in the rocking chair, dude, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, you want to play with Uncle Ray? You want to? Yeah. Do- <laughs> like, oh my God, dude! I fell out. It's like oh, there was okay. actually I the clown come under the bed come from in scary movie. <laughs> actually, a couple of different things in scary movie. I think it was they uh, kind of paid homage to for this when the the wife is laying on the bed by herself, just with her. I, I guess the button oh, yeah. shirt, long button up shirt on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the an entity or something kind of grabs at her or something mm-hmm. pulls at her shirt she pulls it back down grabs at her again pulls at her shirt starts pulling her up the wall right uh, i think that was done in the movie with tori spelling wasn't it yeah yeah so they did they definitely acknowledged this movie a couple of times um but like i said partially based on a true film and if you guys want to see a really really scary movie i even i mean to me this day it still feels scary. Maybe it's because just, I don't know. There's parts of it. I would say for sure. Um, like when the, like we're talking about when the tornado comes through and then, um, the hallucinations that my guy was having in the washroom where he started the the heat lamp got all hot and he started tearing his own face off. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a few places. And I can remember, like I said, you know, I'd keep catch glimpses of that or the part in the swimming pool with the skeletons or whatever, the zombies. Yeah. Is she, uh, it's an unfilled swimming pool or something, but it's got rainwater. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that scared yeah. the living daylight side of me when I was a kid. And like I said, I mean, this came out, you know, I wouldn't have seen this. I probably saw this when I was five or six or seven on the TV or something. And yeah, back then, I, and that's what I say. I could see, especially for the time, how it would be and, and like i said dude I, i'll go back to it there is nothing wrong with this movie it's a great movie it, it really is i just personally for some reason i just like i don't know I, I don't know if it's the pace or if it's maybe it's too cerebral i was wanting more horror or what but it, this is the, man the script this, i mean it's almost like this is a drama with some supernatural stuff thrown in this would be like a thing was you know what i mean like if it, they didn't have the parts with the zombies and the tearing the face off and all this would be like a thriller it wouldn't yeah. even can be considered a horror movie because it's just so it's got that spook me spooky atmosphere but the dialogue and the script is just so well so good and so well written and they go into like um you know it, for 1982 they're talking about stuff that ghost hunters and like zach baggins or whoever on like we're talking about now in paranormal research, they're talking about this back here. Like it's, it, it relates to today. The things that you hear, if you, if you watch those sort of uh, TV shows or whatever. So, I mean, it's a phenomenal, it's an absolutely phenomenal movie. I just don't know why I didn't get into it. <laughs> you know, um, there is, I think this pretty much kind of describes the movie on how you should look at it or how you feel about it into a T almost. There's this person on IMDb that's given us a, a submission 
about what they thought about okay, a review of the movie uh-huh. uh, by a person named Smiley's World. This was in October 5th, 2001. They put this up there. Right on. So they say there are two types of horror films. There are the scary ones, which is what the word horror means in the first place. And then there are the bloody, gory kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps the latter kind should be categorized under another name. But at any rate, Poltergeist is a good horror film. It goes beyond the idea of typical ghosts in sheets jumping out of nowhere and saying boo. Mm -hmm. Most of the adventure takes place in their world rather than ours, although we cannot see what's going on there. This is a very thrilling movie. It would rather, or it has great special effects and all the scare elements that make a horror film what it is supposed to be. The clown in the chair at the foot of the boy's bed was a particularly tense moment for me. That's me right there. This yeah, no is doubt. the only movie I wanted that I went to see four times at the theater, partly just to watch others' reactions. Heck uh, yeah. Um that's a just a short version of it. He's got a, a very long version on there. I'm not reading the whole thing. Yeah. But it, it, that kind of sim that kind of sums it up. And basically this movie, the key plots <laughs> to it or the, the key points, the movie, you get the calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. You got the freelings living in the suburban uh neighborhood there. At first everything seems normal. But mm-hmm. Carol Ann begins to communicate with invisible forces through the family's television, which displays only static. You know, she's just watching the screen of static, and that's it. And the mom can't understand why, and she'll turn the TV channel on. And the girl will wake up in the middle of the night, and I guess the TV's on static, and she'll be looking at it still. Um, well, she was talking to it, too. Yeah. And then poltergeist activity begins. as another point after that. So you got the phenomena starting small with chairs moving on their own. Objects I like when she put the helmet on her and slid her across the floor. That was funny. Right. She was showing Craig T. Nelson when he got home. She wanted him to keep an open mind about what she he was seeing. But the chair went across the floor. He was amazed by that and trying to look at the chair. Then she puts the helmet on Carol Ann. And, uh, what is this? A skateboard? And yeah. She gets whoosh, across the <laughs> she floor. She didn't put her on a skateboard. She just sat her on the. She just sat down like crisscross applesauce. And oh, just said, okay. Okay. Well, she, she, got her, she said, ow, that burns. And she was rubbing her butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she moved pretty quickly. So, but uh, yeah, and, and the family's intrigued, but not immediately concerned. The activity grows more intense, however, culminating in a dramatic scene where the paranormal forces violently affect the household. And then you got Carol's or Carol Ann's disappearance, mm-hmm. where in a terrifying turn of events, she gets sucked into a portal and goes missing. Though her body's gone, her voice can still be heard communicating from the television. And the family realizes at that point this is more serious. So they start seeking help. They're desperate for help. They enlist the help of some parapsychologists mm-hmm. led by, a, I think her name was, let's see, it was a weird, Lesh? Dr. Lesh? Dr. Lesh. Dr. Lesh yeah. uh, played by Beatrice Strait. The experts confirmed the presence of a poultry. Yeah. I think Zelda Rubenstein is probably the most famous thing to come from this movie. It's like when you think of she this movie. She is definitely one of the most before. memorable. Definitely one of the most memorable. Tangina the Medium. Yeah. Do you yeah, really Zelda, think of, like, the first thing I Rubenstein. think of when I think of that is either Caroline in front of the TV, the zombies in the pool, or Tangia. Yeah. And I did you know say like, uh what's the word the the words that you think of when you see when you think of Tangina? What's the words you think of? Poltergeist. No, 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 no. Well, what's the the line from the movie. Oh, I don't even remember. I don't know. She's like, don't go to the light. Don't go toward the light. Care later. Oh, well, Dr. Lesh. To- yeah. And remember Dr. Lesh told her not to do that to begin with too, though. Mm-hmm. But this that little, it's the voice that she has. I think is yeah. what makes people remember it so much. Mm-hmm. And that little, uh, when she talks to the family, she's got this calming about her, but the voice is still there. The high pitched type voice. But right. she's calming and she's telling them what's going on. That you know, Carol Ann's okay, but the thing on the other there is a, a bad presence on the other side and mm-hmm. all this stuff about it. Um, now that you know brings that up, tangent of the medium. They bring her in, spiritual medium, who becomes the key to rescuing Carol Ann. She explains the house is built on an old cemetery, and restless spirits are drawn to the little girl's life force. The spirits are trapped between worlds, confused and angry. Yeah. Um, so rescue mission, that's where, you know, you've got the people there who are supernatural people there helping out the family the best they can. The haunting starts to escalate, getting worse. 
uh, poltergeist activity intensifies and the truth revealed about the housing development. The final escape is when, you know, I don't want to go too deep in that because it gives away a lot of the end of the movie and everything. But, you know, there's a very climatic sequence at the end of it, and it, which includes the pool Travis mentioned a moment ago mm-hmm. with the uh, skeletons and everything. Uh, speaking of which, I I don't know if this is true or not, uh, and I didn't have time to verify this truth or not. You might know, but it's either rumored or it was fact, one or the other, that the skeletons in that scene were real. Oh, I don't I don't know if there's any. I've heard that before, but I don't know if there's any truth to it. Yeah, I don't know if there's any truth to it or not, but I mean, it, it, it mentions a couple different places that the skeletons in that scene were real and everything. I'd be like, no, nah, it's okay. You can you give me some fake stuff in here. <laughs> I'll act for you. Don't put you're gonna scare me with some real skeletons out there, right? Me doing all that. Uh, we mentioned before before I uh, do the next step here when we did um, Firestarter that Drew Barrymore was up for the role that Heather O'Rourke got. And um, she lost out on it, so she became Gertie on E.T. instead. Yeah. But um, that was one of the things that's brought up on here as well, toward the front, that stands out about it. i tell you what stands out about it to me is, remember a while ago I saw mine, I didn't think it got that big, but this was absolutely huge. Uh, they budgeted at $10.7 million. Right, and they grossed worldwide seventy seven point two three one million. Just rounded off seventy seven million by today's like conversion rate would be three hundred and three million dollars. See, I, I would like to know this for sure, and I, I sort of put, I don't want to say I put her on the spot, but when uh, Catherine Mary Stewart was here doing Night of the Comet with us, I brought up things like I've asked you before about the budget and. Mm-hmm. Uh, worldwide made money. So I said, I've often talked to Travis and we we talk about, does the budget include the actor's pay and everything? We, we, we believe it does. And she's like, oh, absolutely. Everything to do with the movie can figure it into the budget. <coughs> no doubt. Yeah, if they buy dinner for them on set that day, mm-hmm. I would imagine. Mm-hmm. But when I told her what her the movie grossed worldwide, it didn't sound right to her. She said that might be, you know, after VHS was released and you know, years down the road, possibly. Oh. But I mean, I don't. I I, won't, I wonder still about the grossing worldwide. Is this during the time when it was released in the theater, and that's what it made worldwide? Or right. was there a is there a time frame after the fact which includes the release of the VHS and the initial sales of the VHS? Just like when DVD was a thing, the initial sale of the DVD would that have been included? I don't know. That's opening good, that's that's a good question. That's, that's opening good. weekend was still about six point eight million. Yeah, they nearly made their money back on opening weekend. So I mean, yeah, that's close. <laughs> so uh, it's just something I've always wondered. Maybe one of these days we'll we'll get a for sure answer on it. Right. Um, it, key it, themes of this movie, of course, that makes a a, a good horror movie, mm. or that makes this a good horror movie. Um, it's a suburban type horror because you're supposed to feel safe in a suburban area, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing they did with, 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 with scream and scream. You're set up in a suburban type area. You should feel safe. No crime really happens around there. And all of a sudden yeah. you have a slasher on the loose. It's just gutting people and everything. Right. And then, you know, in this suburban type setup area, you should feel safe with your family and your pet and all this, all this good stuff. But suddenly it's terrible haunting and horrors and ha- everything happening to you. Yeah. Uh, I can't say that I would have stayed once I seen the chairs moving. I would have gone. That'd be pretty wild. Yeah. I, yeah, I, would, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't stay past that. I don't think I, ain't, I, I, I know I've seen enough movies to know. I don't want, I don't want to mess with anything. <laughs> I don't care how right. cool it looks, you know? And so I, I did, I did find where the, or what's purported as the main inspiration for the movie was um it's either it's either herman or herman herman it's got two r's and two m's in it so i don't know if it's herman or herman but i call it the herman house i reckon yeah <clears throat> excuse me but it was in a uh, long island new york and um they said that they it it didn't like pull exactly 
uh, verbatim what what that what they said happened there, but um, it said according to the Long Island Pulse on February third, nineteen fifty eight, in Seaford, New York, James Herman or Herman. I'm sorry, that is spelled correctly here. It's just two ends on the end of it, so I don't know what happened on that pull up. Anyway, uh, he returned home from work to his wife Lucille, telling them an, an unbelievable story. Lucille said she and their two teenagers children heard popping noises throughout the house early in the afternoon while investigating they discovered various common household substances uncapped and placed upside down and uh in addition all the bottles were suddenly warm to the touch and uh, a bottle of holy water was spilled over on the bedroom, bedroom dresser and five days later the popping phenomenon repeated when james was home to witness it so then they the story went public and the events were televised and you know so after that they said that more occurrence more incidences happened and they decided to temporarily move the family out of the home and then when they returned things escalated so evidently i suppose they ended up moving or whatever but uh i guess uh spielberg decided that would be a good movie which we get yeah. you know you hear stories like that all the time all over the country that's why we still have shows like ghost hunters and right you know even though i mean i hate to say it but if you're a fan of ghost hunters they've been exposed several times oh absolutely uh, but look we, we we know ahead of time watching them that there's going to be some things that just probably wasn't legit is ghost was, hunters is that gas is that zach baggins or is it was ghost hunters the first one that came out ghost hunters was the first one that came out uh, yes yeah. which one is zach because he's a I, clown like you cannot watch that and believe any of that I'm but he's sure. entertaining nonetheless. <laughs> I'm not sure. The ones I remember originally, you had a guy named Steve, Steve Ooh. Gonzalez. Uh, there was a, there was a guy. That's it. Oh, there was two main guys. Uh, right. Bald headed white guy and a, another guy that was yeah. had dark hair. Yeah, um, they were with taps. Yeah, they were taps. There you things. go. That's it. Yeah. And they had some really scary stuff came out. Then they just really got to the point to where. It was Ghost too... Adventures. That's Zach Baggins, Ghost Adventures. Yeah. Well, there's probably some more entertainment in that than there is re reality. It probably. is. It's, it's absolutely silly. Well, so hold on one second. It's, they're still fun to think about as we get the get that shut down. But they're still it's still fun to think about and still fun to watch. And um, I've I've saw a couple of the other ones too. I don't I don't think it's no, it was I believe it was Ghost Adventures. It could have been uh where they were exploring uh some port town out west and what was crazy about that was that a lot of um a lot of stuff to do with hp lovecraft and the cthulhu mythos happened right. out there. they had tried to film some movies or something i had to look that one back up but that one was pretty wild that one was and, and with all the people that you have the locals and people live there telling their stories and stuff and then the investigations that they did coupled up with the history and all the shipwrecks and all this and that it it made for a very very interesting tale at, at the very least yeah well what i was saying with this movie a while ago when he talks about what what made it so scary in a way mm -hmm. it was well written for one we know steven spielberg definitely writes a good tale but i mentioned the suburban horror part mm -hmm. you've got spiritualism and the supernatural that's brought in to try and you know, explain things and what you got to do for the paranormal phenomena that's involved and it in it. It disappears, and yeah, that that brings it to parental fear and the family part bonds me. part, because or they listed as parental fear and family bonds. It says yeah. how the film taps into primal fear of the parents, the safety of their children first, for sure. Caroline abduction uh, disappears into a different area, a different realm, whatever the case may be. They don't know how to get her back. They're scared for that, and then there's the greed and the consequences. Uh, talking about how the greed of the unethical real estate practices that were done where they built over the top of that cemetery, but just knocked down the headstones and got rid of them. And it's moved the name of the cemetery somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and then they bring in the classic tropes, like, you know, the maggots in the stake and then the yes. zombies and then the, the special effects with the face tearing off yeah, and then seeing your, stuff your in the childhood the primordial fears and, so, I mean, they, yeah, Do together, the dolls or, or things coming to life at you, like the clown yeah, doll attack. No doubt. Like, it's a, it, it's easily, it's easily in, if not the top five, the top 10 greatest horror movies of all time, probably. 
Yeah, and it's got one of the most memorable scenes, even though it's not scary. It's Carol Ann in front of the TV, touching it with a static and looking yeah. around saying, they're here. Yeah, when all the stuff pops off. Yeah, one of the most iconic moments in a, in, in a horror cinema that just stands mm-hmm. out from horror. People definitely remember stuff like that for sure. So um, the movie itself, we talked earlier about the commercial success of it. It uh, became one of the defining supernatural horror films of the 80s, blending the traditional ghost story elements with some modern suburban life. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you always feel safe in a suburban neighborhood, but I guess you can't feel safe anywhere anymore now. Right. Thanks, Steven Spielberg. Um, uh-huh. The movie spawned two sequels and a remake. The remake was in 2015, and mm-hmm. uh, none of them really matched the impact of the original. No. The feel or the story or anything, really. Well, it, it I was think they did then, the sequels. Too, this was new at the time. This was this was something you'd never seen before either. You know, we're coming off the hills of things like the massacre movies, and you're still yeah. kind of at this time. I would think you know, coming out of the '60s and '70s, you're still in the you're still in the Alfred Hitchcock, Stephen Price kind of range. Um, you know, you had the Hitchhiker, which was uh, subliminally or uh, cerebral, scary, and you know, you had a couple of little gore fests, like like I said, like uh, like. Texas Chainsaw, but there was nothing that was really this like this. No, no, there just wasn't. Um, it, it, it even it even got its own curse named after it, the Poltergeist Curse. <laughs> if anything ever happened bad on a set at that point with anything else, people would be like, you know, we got the Poltergeist Curse or something. Yeah, uh, so and you're coming off the hills of The Shining too. This is two after two years after right. The Shining, right? So, which was also a ghost type thing and for those of you who don't know what the poltergeist curse was it was because several of the cast members including the two daughters i mentioned earlier have passed away probably earlier in life than they should have or would would be expected to um Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the little curse you're referring to there uh what do you think what oh oh, oh, oh. this is one for the fans so all three of them no, I'm <laughs> All three of our fans. All three of our fans. Mo, Mo, no. Larry, and Curly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for 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 the listeners and for you too. So my, I already have my answer. It's a no brainer for me. But as far as like the haunting type movies go, and I just mentioned The Shining. Which one? Which one do you think is is the better of the two, The Shining or Poltergeist? Or could you even? Could you choose? Because they are similar. You can't say it's not. You can't say, oh, you can't compare those. They're not the same, but they are because you're doing. They with both them. got. Mem- they both got memorable scenes. Um, memorable scenes, including children. Mm-hmm. Um, scary people. I mean, the the fact that how Jack Nicholson plays that character mm-hmm. um, there toward the end of it's really definitely scary. Um, I I don't know, man. I mean. I might fall back on Poltergeist myself as yeah. being more of a favorite for me. Uh, that's not taking anything away from The Shining, though. Heck yeah, I think I think Poltergeist was better written as far as the script is concerned. Yeah, but for me, yeah, The Shining is Shining is miles ahead for the time. But for as far as the 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 actual horror aspect of it, the, it, the downright, which one's scarier. The, the naked late, the naked old woman in the bathtub that that's enough for me. If it just had that one scene, that was the scariest part of that whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my but no, yeah, no, nah, both movies are phenomenal though. This one was, this one does stand out to me though, as far as horror movies go in, in the horror genre, I cannot, and I'm thinking real hard. I cannot think of a, more well-written movie there's a horror movie than this one like as far as the dialogue is concerned do you I know what think horror movie that holds up to this movie as far as the story and the script go do you know what horror movie got me later on it's an actual horror movie well there's two actually um one of them is uh during that time frame where they did movies like the ring mm-hmm. um what was the movie called? It's based off of a Japanese horror movie, just like The Ring was, where the woman was drowned in her bathtub, and uh, I guess her kid was there and died in the house as well. Um, 
I don't remember this one. I haven't seen this one. Oh, she comes uh, you know, all, all contorted and everything down the stairs like she's crawling. Oh, is that no. the one where the black stuff was on the ceiling coming across? Uh, it may have been the grudge. Had the, the grudge. Yes, the grudge. Oh my God, that, that's a freaky, scary movie for me. I think I told um, this story one time about the grudge. We had just went and watched it, that sound she makes. That. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, I was at the house, and what's so funny at the time? We'll go ahead and tell the story again. At the time, we lived in Mill Hill, and the access for the attic was in the closet. So it's just a little square hole in the closet, just like in that movie. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't want to do that. And I had no idea that uh, we didn't find. I didn't find out what the noise was until about a uh, about a week later. <clears throat> but I had no idea that a failing compressor on a refrigerator sounds exactly like that girl out of the Grudge. Wow. I was standing in. I was standing in the closet getting something out of it, and I heard that racket, dude. I am not kidding you. I'm talking about. <laughs> Whenever that movie came out, so I'm in my mid twenties, late twenties or something. I yes. unasked the area. I left the house <laughs> and called Tasha and told her, "Look, hey, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> like, uh, call me when you get home. I'm gonna go to the bar and have a drink for a minute." So, <laughs> like, you know, freaked me out, dude. <clears throat> you know how the little boy made the sound like the cat, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I watched. We went and watched this movie to the theater. We come home. We had a cat at our house. Mm-hmm. We had just fallen asleep that night, and I'll be darned if that cat didn't jump on the bed, land square on my chest, and turn his head at me and go, meow. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, was, I bolted up as quick as you could just picture someone like me bolting up. My hands immediately, my right hand immediately up under its front two legs, and I shoved that thing as hard as I could. As I mean, you're about to kill it. <laughs> oh, no, look. It went through the it went through the doors open for the bedroom, went to the living room. And just so you know, cats do land on their feet. Always. Uh, always. But I, I shoved that thing through the air, scared the dickens out of me. And that's all my weird. wife could do was laugh. Because that's what her and my daughter would do, that noise. And they know it would aggravate me. And my wife had long hair at the time. She'd throw her hair over her front of her face and would, uh, uh, or whatever, however the noise goes. <laughs> I'm like, and y'all suck. Just stop. It's not cool. Uh, do you know how Heather Ward got picked for the movie? How? She was eating lunch with her mother and her sister at an MGM commissary. Producer Steven Spielberg came up to them and wanted O'Rourke for the part of Carol Ann. She initially failed the screen test because she kept laughing her way through the audition, even when she was supposed to be afraid. So Spielberg thought she was too young to take the part seriously, but he still recognized something special in her. So he asked her to come back for another audition and this time, bring a scary storybook with her. Uh, he also asked her to scream, so she screamed and screamed until she started crying. This audition got her cast as Carol Ann. I'll be. And here we go again. Real, real human skeletons were used in this swimming pool since the crew decided it would be too complicated and expensive to get fake ones. Toby Hooper. No, a, fake, a fake skeleton costs more than a real skeleton. That's insane. <laughs> I guess Toby, Toby Hooper had previously done the same thing in Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 74. I did not know that. Uh, Joe Beth Williams was not made aware of this until after the scene was finished. She didn't know she was in that water down there in that little pool thing with real skeletons coming out at her and, oh, float, man. and floating up by her. But she was mad when she found out later. Oh, dude, wouldn't you be, though? Well, I got a little crazy tidbit before we start. We're getting close to the end here. What, it's, what's uh, that? <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Until I hear different, I'm going to say this is the first movie with uh, what we call uh, the bonus scenes on the credits. Oh, it says after the credit. It's not a scene, but after the credits and the logo of the MGM MGM Lion is shown, we can hear children laughing. Ooh. Fans of the film have assumed that, the ch- that those kids are the ones that's been released from the beast and crossed over to the threshold. Oh, it's a good point because the woman does tell them, you know, to enter or something. That it's a safe place for them. Yeah, ain't that something? I never knew that. I didn't. I've never seen the end of the credits. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it now. Me too. Now, because I haven't seen that either. That's freaky. Well, as Travis said, we're pretty much getting near the end of here. We're wrapping up. Oh, uh, we're at 45 minute mark, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it short for the day and everything. Uh, 
going to make sure everybody that, of course, as usual, you're listening to us on where you get your <clears throat> podcast at. We're pretty much everywhere. iTunes and Spotify, all those good places. Uh, you can go directly to the webpage, which, Travis, I didn't notice, had a large spike in people on the webpage listening from the browser, by the way. Nice. Uh, very Thank nice. Thank you for uh, that. Thank you absolutely. for that. Absolutely, it's a it's it's a great place to go and listen to it. You can go there by typing in your browser, www dot retro life the number the number four. Let me start over. I completely screwed that up. <laughs> www dot retro life the number four the letter u dot com. Yeah, and you don't have and, to put in the HTTPS backslash backslash. No. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> you do not. Just type it in there and go with it. And if you want to watch a video instead <clears> of <throat> listening to the audio to the browser, go to the show notes, and the video should be in there. Usually by sometime later in the day, the first day um, that is added to there. Uh, you can't do it ahead of time for some reason with the host we have. Not sure why. A uh, bug to be fixed, I guess. But oh, anyway, it, it's eventually there. I have an interesting piece of news. I don't know if Chris even wants to announce this yet or not, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. it. That We're looking in the near future to move our service provider, our hosting service, to where we will be able to accommodate more guests. So if you would like to come on and join the show one evening and hang out with us, uh, you don't have to have been in a movie before. Uh, <laughs> uh, let us know. Uh, so we're going to be able to, we're, we're expanding our capability as far as being able to interface with other browsers and uh, people's methods of getting online. And a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, if you have a scary th situation that happened to you when you were growing up or you were a young adult or whatever the case may be that you feel, you know, might be supernatural, like, um, poltergeist or if you just something just really scared you as a kid and it turned out to not be so bad after all there's a little humor to it make a video of uh, you talking about it and sending it to us we'll put it on the on the uh, youtube page uh get a special section coming up on that just called basically childhood memories and things like that and we'll toss it up on there you can have a uh, your story out there for the world to hear and if it's funny great if it's legit ooh, we need some scary ooh. stuff you know <laughs> So that's all good. But yeah. And always like, comment, subscribe, share on all media platforms that you find us on. Um, and we encourage you to ask questions, make comments, give us feedback, input, whether it be positive or negative. Right. And uh, just to give a shout out to Aaron. Thanks for the uh, Aaron, A A R O N. Uh, I don't know if think it's Aaron isn't a girl. A A Ron. A A Ron. We'll say A A Ron, man. Hey, thanks for uh, emailing and let us know what you thought about the M Street. Uh, episode we did it was a fun episode to do we're glad you liked it spread the word to everybody that maybe you'll find some more people that like it as much as you did too we appreciate it for sure um, facebook uh instagram that's our two key places you'll find us at and then youtube if you go to the top at the browser on youtube and just type in um, youtube.com and then backslash and at retro life for you it will take you straight to the home page for us on there um you don't have to just search the videos of all kinds which you can and you'll get some of ours pop up but you'll go straight to the page where we're hosted at on there with all, all of our videos are yeah just to make it a little easier for you Heck so yeah. um travis you got something uh scary or something funny for Ooh, us? i don't know man was, last time i told a bad joke about ghosts and it still haunts me to this day i'm gonna take that as being it <laughs>